about all the things that you guys do here at Ashlawn to help people who don't have homes. We're certainly doing the walkathon today, but how many boys and girls have made meals for the homeless? Raise your hand. By the end of the year, it will be almost everybody. You also, later this year, we're gonna be doing Cereal Mountain, where we're gonna be collecting boxes of cereal so that people will have breakfast every morning. So there are lots and lots of things that you do here to help people here in Arlington. So first, we're gonna hear a little bit more about what does it mean to be homeless and what is that? So our friends from Ace Fan, Mr. Jan is here, uh, Aaliyah, Kathy, and Vanessa are all gonna to talk to us a little bit about that. Now, when someone hands me a microphone, I always wanna sing, so I'm gonna put it down. <laughs> and I'm just gonna talk real loudly. Can everybody hear me? Yeah! Great. Well, my name is Jan, and I work at Ace Fan. And first, let me just say thank you again so much, all everybody here at Ashlawn, because you really do wonderful things all year long to help us. And what we do at Ace Fan is we take a lot of the things that you give us, and we give them to people who need them. So sometimes you've collected soap and shampoo, and toothpaste and toothbrushes, and we give them out to people who need those. And then when you make the food, we go out every single night of the year and hand out meals on the street. We do 80 meals a night on the street. We do breakfast at the shelter with your cereal mountain. And we do lunches during the day. And when you add it all up, it's over 50,000 meals that we serve to people in Arlington. We hand out clothes. We get places where people who don't have bathrooms can come take a shower. We do all sorts of things all year round for people who are homeless. And they're all great because people need them. But what we've decided we really want to do, and we put it right up there, right in our name, is we want to end homelessness in Arlington. We want everybody who's sleeping on the streets or sleeping in the shelter to have a warm, safe place to live. It's a big goal, and we're going to need your help. So I know that all of you care about helping because you're walking with us, and you collect a change, and you collect cereal, and you do all those things. Well, what we need you to do is to tell other people how much you care, and that's raising awareness. I've found the best way to get an idea into my head is to tell me a story. So I'm gonna teach you a little story that sounds a lot like a story you've heard before, so if you learn it real well, you can tell other people. So first, how many in here, raise your hands, have ever heard the story of the three little pigs? Some of you teachers have never heard this story? Oh. <laughs> Great, well I'm going to teach you to some teachers. Alright, you can put your hands down. We all remember parts of the story, okay? Now, how many of you knew that this story was about homelessness? Some of you know. Okay, that's great. When I was your age, I was that kid in class that anytime something didn't make sense, I would raise my hand and say, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Teachers really liked me. Um, so when you hear the story of the three little pigs that say, once upon a time, there were three little pigs and they needed houses. Yes, Jan, why do they need houses? Well, they're, you know, well, they need houses. Okay, fine. So the first little pig met a man carrying straw and he bought straw from him. Yes, Jan, where did he get the money? He had it. From where? He just had it, okay? <laughs> and then they said the first little pig built a house out of straw because he was lazy. Yes, Jim. Building a house out of straw sounds really, really hard. I don't think he was lazy. I think that's really, really clever. And they go, stop raising your hand. Uh, <laughs> then they said the third little pig was clever and he built a house out of bricks. Yes, Jim. That sounds way easier because bricks just pile right up. I don't think he was that clever. And I said, okay, Jan, this story isn't for you. When you're older, you can tell the story any which way you want. And I'm older now. So I'm going to tell the story the way that I think about it. Now, we're going to all say this together as Vanessa pushes the button, but how do all stories begin? Okay, push, all right. push the button. Okay. What? Oh. Vanessa got it right. All right. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. 
and they were living with their mother. And one day their mother told them, I don't have any more money, and I can't feed you anymore. So you're going to have to go and try to find jobs and homes for yourself. And I looked it up. 500 years ago when they told the story, that's really how it started. So now I know the answer to that. So the pig said, OK, and they said goodbye. And Vanessa, they went off hand in hand to the city to try to find jobs and homes. Now, the first little pig looked in a newspaper to try to find a job. Turns out there aren't a lot of jobs for pigs in a city. So he didn't have any money. So he couldn't buy straw. He couldn't find a place to live. So he did what he could. He found some things in the street. He gathered them all up. And he tried to build a little shelter for himself. And sometimes we see people out in the streets. Maybe late at night or early morning, you see that there's people living in cardboard or living on the streets. And so this little pig, he wants to find a job. He wants to find a place to live, but he doesn't have money. So he's doing what he can. Now, at this point in the story, we'd see a big bad wolf. Well, we don't have any big bad wolves in our life. But we have had some really big, bad, crazy weather in Arlington lately, haven't we? Yeah. Does anybody remember the hurricane we had this summer? Yeah. What is the earthquake? We had a hurricane this summer. Okay. And we had an earthquake. Yeah. Well, the hurricanes. What do hurricanes do? They huff and they puff and they huff and they puff. And they blow away cardboard and they blow away things that aren't homes. So the first little pig was homeless again. Now the second little pig, maybe he found a job, maybe it was part-time, a little bit of money. I know some people who sell newspapers on the street. It's not a whole lot of money. They can buy a few things that they need, but they can't buy a house. So I've seen some people in Arlington, for example, Vanessa, who build something, it looks kind of like a house. So I've seen some people live under bridges and they make something that almost looks like a house. But it's not a house, it's not inside, it's not safe. And so besides the hurricane, I heard some people say, what else crazy thing happened this summer? An earthquake. And the earthquake came and shook and knocked down all those things down that weren't quite houses and safe. So the second little pig was homeless again. Don't even need a big bad wolf. We've got crazy weather. So the third little pig, he's the lucky one. He finds a job and it pays okay and he finds someone who says, okay, I will rent you a place. And there he is, living in a house made out of bricks, if you want, it's made out of bricks, but he's inside and he's safe. And he's working hard and he's saving his money, he gets to live inside. Now at this point of the story, the first pig and the second little pig are homeless again. And what do they do? They run up to the third pig's house, trying to get safe, right? And they knock on his door and they knock on his door and they say, it's cold out here and it's not safe out here and we need a place to live. Can you help us? No. Yes. yes. What does the third little pig say? Yes. He says, yes. Okay. And so there they are, in the second left window, all staying away. You see the snowflakes falling. They're not cold. They're inside and they're safe. And they're working together and living together. And maybe the first little pig and second little pig, maybe they get to save up their money and they get jobs so they can go live on themselves too. And maybe they'll all get to live happily ever after inside in their own place. That's a happy ending that I want to see and that all of us want to see in Arlington for all of our neighbors who are homeless. So when I think of the story of the three little pigs, you used to get to the end of the story that didn't make any sense, that I never liked, and they'd always say the moral of the story is don't be lazy. And I didn't like that, because I'm like, I don't know that they're like, they don't have any money. It doesn't mean that they're lazy, it means that they're broke. So I changed the story, and I've got two endings for you. And the first one is, you can't judge people by where they sleep at night. There are people who sometimes have it harder than the rest of us, or have it better. We don't know anything about them. But everybody matters. We, I'm sure you learn that at this school a lot. Everybody matters, all of our neighbors matter, and we have an opportunity to be nice to people. So my second moral of the story, if somebody comes to you and asks for help, it's a really good feeling to be able to say yes. Because we don't like being told no, right? No. 
We like being told yes. If we want something, we want someone to be able to say yes. So our jobs at ACEFAN are so much fun because all the time we get to say yes to people. And we get to say yes to people because we have all sorts of people like you in Arlington that are helping us every day. So I want to say that's the end of my story. I hope maybe it sticks in your brains a little bit, sounds a little bit like something. Maybe you can tell it too. You can tell it however you want it. But a big thank you from all of us at ASPAN, all of the homeless neighbors that you're helping help. And now we're going to hear some results of all the things you've been doing. But first, big thank you. And boys and girls, first of all, I want to say outstanding, amazing meeting you're here so far. You guys, I think this is our best assembly ever. I'll just try and talk. This is my voice. Um, the next thing is one of the big reasons that Mr. Jan can say yes is because they can buy things. They can use the money to help people and so they can say yes. So do you guys want to hear what you did? Yeah. All right. This is amazing. Way way beat our record from last year. We have in these jars 